Welcome to Podcast Sound Advice, the place for up-to-date podcast tactics and trends. You'll find actionable strategies to help you grow your audience, expand your influence, and monetize your content. Join Phyllis and Kelvin for Podcast Sound Advice, starting now. Hi, this is Phyllis with the Sound Advice Podcast, and Kelvin is with me today, um, our, my husband and our and my partner in business as well. And we have a lovely guest, uh, Jen Liddy is joining us and she's one of our podcast clients and a friend and someone that I really enjoy talking to and working with as well. She is the founder, creator, owner of the Idea Space podcast. She also has her own business. She's a mom, she's got a business background. She's a very busy person, so we're really glad that she had time to talk to us today. Welcome, Jen. Thanks, Phyllis, I'm happy to be here. So Jen started her podcast in October, actually October 31st, specifically of 2018. So she is well on to her second year of podcasting. Congratulations for that, Jen. Thanks. She has published over 75 episodes and is going strong. And we want to talk to her today a little bit about how she's been able to do that. And, but let's back up first and talk about Jen, what was the goal and the main, I guess, sort of inspiration for starting the podcast in the first place? Yes, I, I was very reticent to start a podcast because my story was everybody has a podcast. There's millions of podcasts out there. Who the hell am I to start a podcast, right? But then one day in a coaching session, a client said to me, I just wish I could take you home with me and put you in my back pocket so that I could have your little Jen Liddy-isms whenever I need them. And that was kind of the motivation I needed because then it felt like I was being in service to my clients and then could potentially build an audience of people who maybe would never even work with me, but could benefit from some of the things that I, I like to teach or share that I've learned. So it was my way of being in my client's back pocket. That was it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's great. And you know, that's such, that's just a great way of explaining podcasts, right? Because everybody does have them in their back pocket. They're in our phone, which is <laughs> probably in our hands, actually, most of the day. So yeah, it's perfect. You're always with us. Yes. <laughs> so the Idea Space podcast, for people who haven't listened to it, um, they definitely should check it out. But it's a blend. Jen does do some interviews on occasion. But a lot of her podcasts are Jen talking comes to her audience, she's sharing information, and quite often she's really focused on helping people um, with mindset sort of type things, especially uh, women in business, but not a lot of the things you talk about, I think are applicable in all kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about, I guess, why the idea space uh, resonated with you and what people would expect to hear when they check it out. So the idea space was meant for people who have an idea that either to start a business, grow a business, get a better life in some way, but they need the mental space, energy, and time to do it. So it's really about making space for the ideas that we have to come to life. I'm really about, you know, your idea could live in your head forever in perpetuity, perfection inside your mind. Mm -hmm. But if it stays there and we don't take the risk of putting it out into the world, then the world doesn't benefit from your idea. And also that wears you down. So I I talk to people all the time who've said like, oh, I've wanted to do this for 10 years, or I've always wanted to try X, Y, and Z, but they are afraid for so many reasons uh, to actually get it out of their head. And so I created the podcast because I was really tired of hearing from people how much they wanted something and how afraid they were to go get it. So I, I wanted to give people, you know, realistic strategies, um, help them get courage, because I always say, People look at me and they're like, how do you do so much? And I'm like, honestly, if I can do it, anybody can do it. If I can have a business, right? If I can leave teaching and start a business, if I can, if I can do the things I can do, anybody can do it, what I do because like there's nothing that special about me except I'm willing to take a chance. That's like the only I think that's the only thing that's different from me and the people who come to the podcast who have had an idea but haven't made space for it. That's perfect. I agree. Although, Jen, I do think that you're you're pretty special. <laughs> I actually really like your podcast and I'll share this just my personal two cents. Um, one of the things that I enjoy the most about your podcast, I think probably is 
gives you a really good way of teaching concepts. And a lot of times, again, I believe either they're mindset type concepts that sometimes mm-hmm. can be difficult to just get your head around. Yeah. And just have a really good way of talking about those and I think making a good connection. So um, I enjoy it. Yeah, Thank I think. And I don't think that's something that comes easy to everyone. So um, we really appreciate that you have that talent. Well, Thank I think you. you give some some really good insights in regards to how to get out of your own way, too. Yes, that's a big deal, because I think if we if we could just get out of our own way, that we can like we can do so much but most people don't even realize that they're in their own way that right there if you can acknowledge that you're in your own way without judging yourself or being angry at yourself you're like you're winning that is that is the thing that's the hurdle that's so true mm-hmm. yeah so as you've had your podcasting journey now that you've been doing it for a while what what's your kind of favorite thing about podcasting what do you enjoy about doing it i enjoy that i can um do it whenever I want to, right? Like I like to write my podcasts in advance. Usually I write them a month in advance. So the, is it, would it be helpful to talk a little bit about my process because my process helps me enjoy it. So if I had to come up with a podcast, like just on the fly, that wouldn't, that wouldn't feel good to me. Although I know some podcasters really enjoy that. So I like to plan things out. And so podcasting lets me think about what theme am I going to talk about this month? And then what are four sub themes that I want to talk about? And then I can do it whenever I want. Like Mostly I get up at five o'clock in the morning on the day I'm going to record everything because the dog won't bark. <laughs> like it's not here. Nobody else is on the internet. There's very, there's like less background noise. What I like about podcasting is that it's completely like independent. I don't have to like have a client be on a call with me at a certain time. There's just a lot of freedom in it. And I can talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. That's, that's part of what I love too. Um, the other thing I love about podcasting is you know, I just never know who I'm impacting. I was a high school teacher. And one year, these, these girls came back after being at college for a year. And they, they, they tracked me down. And they were like, Miss Liddy, you don't even know the thing you said to us in ninth grade was it came true later on, like when they were freshmen in college. And it was the moment like that where I was like, you never know who you affect or when it's going to like hit them. What you've said can really affect them and make their life better. And I think podcasting is like that too, because sometimes it feels like you're just talking to the void, especially when you're podcasting. Like there's not even like another person on the other side of the video, usually for me. Right. But I know like I'll hear from people, people I don't even like, I rarely see or I don't know. And then out of nowhere, they'll send me a note that said, wow, your podcast this week was really helpful. And I always think, geez, I didn't even know you were a listener. That really makes me happy. So that moment of like, you never know who you're impacting with your words is, I think it's, it's just like, you know, one of the best feelings in the air, in the world. Yeah. Oh, that's great. What a good story too. I bet as a teacher that had to really be uh, rewarding, right? Yes. And the thing is podcasting to me is just another way of teaching, except without having to grade crappy Romeo and Juliet essays. <laughs> you know, I, I actually get to still teach. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I had some teachers who didn't inspire me in the least little bit. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. You. And, and the fact that they actually came back to tell <laughs> you like, oh my word, that's, that's pretty impressive. But I think that people who in their podcasters, they can get kind of defeated. Like if people aren't leaving you reviews or people like that, you don't have a huge number of people listening to your podcast. I want to encourage people do it anyway, because you just never know where your words are going to land. Like I had no idea those girls remembered me from four years ago. You know, you just, and so it's the same thing with podcasting. You just never know where your words are going to land. Yeah, that's true. And you know what's also cool, Jen, is there are going to be people that might not know you that maybe they they just now find out who you are, right? They've either been right. introduced to you maybe through a, a common acquaintance or something. Right. And you've got all this really great information that they can now listen to and kind of get to know you a little if they want to, or if they really like something you've recently put out, they can go back and listen to more, which is another huge upside, I think. True, true, true. Right. So tell me, is there anything that advice that you would give to someone? I know you said just sort of start and be willing to do it, but. Oh, yeah. I think the advice I would give to someone starting podcasting is you don't need a ton of equipment. Like I know that I have seen people 
keep themselves from podcasting because they need the perfect headphones and the perfect microphone and the perfect room and, you know, have to soundproof my room. Those are all very nice things. Don't they get are. Me they are, but they shouldn't be the thing that keeps you from starting. Correct. And believe me, sometimes I listen to my own podcast and I'll be like, oh, Jen, you should really be in a soundproof room or get a better mic. And then part of me is like, but, you know, those are not, that's not like where my uh, number one priorities are for me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that you guys have the best of everything, but for me, like for me, it's more important to get my message out there. So one piece of advice I would say is don't BS yourself into thinking that you need to have it all done, all, it all perfect and all the right gear. And the second piece of advice I would say is if you are not technologically inclined and the idea of learning all the tech is what's keeping you from getting started. Please hire somebody because it is the best money you will spend to have somebody just hold your hand through it and take it from you. Like when you guys, the, the only word I can come with up with is relief. It was pure relief to know that you were, I could do the content and show up where I needed to show up, but you guys show up every single week for me, even on the weeks where I'm like, I haven't recorded it in advance because of whatever's going on in the world. I would really say it is a worthwhile investment to have somebody, if you are not tech savvy and it is exhausting for you, hire somebody. Oh, great. Well, I will say we, we don't have the best of everything. <laughs> um, we do not. Much, much to not. Calvin's dismay. Um, he is <laughs> having a gearhead. He wants, uh, he wants all the gear. Uh, yeah. I am the, I am the tech nerd in the household. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he also has spent a number of years in the previous career installing uh, the best of everything in boardrooms and conferences. 17 uh -huh. years, 17 years between residential and wow. commercial. Yeah. Movies, so. And, you know, for people that thought nothing of spending, you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars on microphones, you know, we're not mm -hmm. doing that here at the Sound Advice <laughs> headquarters. No. No, no, thank you. It's good we, enough, which is something I say all the time. Good enough. We, I don't believe we've spent any more than 100 bucks on a microphone. Oh, really? Okay. Or somewhere right. around that. Yep. Right. And to your point, it, 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 I think some people do allow that to be a stopping point. And we say the same thing that you say. We encourage people to start with what they have. Mm -hmm. And if you want to upgrade or do make some minor changes once you get rolling, that's great. But yeah, we do not want equipment or lack of equipment or something like that to be um, something that stops somebody from getting their message out for sure. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. A lot so, of people have started with earbuds and a microphone built into the. That's what I use. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And, um, and, you know, we much prefer that than opposed to you not doing it. Look, you got well, almost two, two well, years at, of content out there. Yes. At least with headphones and a mic, you at least limit some of the audio coming back into your mic mm -hmm. where if you use your laptop mic instead of a pair of headphones, you'll get feedback. And right, be right. Horrible. So better than no mic. Yeah. But I love that point. And someday, you know, if we buy the thousand dollar microphone, I'll let you know. But I don't really see that happening anytime soon. <laughs> So it's the law of diminishing returns. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's the right. The more you spend on something, that you don't get that much more. Right. So. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. Which is great too, right? Because the technology, like we're recording this today on Squadcast. Um, I know you, you know, you use sometimes Zoom or um, Zencaster. There's a number of things, but you know, these things didn't even exist even three or four years ago when I first started my first podcast. And it was a lot harder then, and it's so much easier now. And so you the Again, the benefit of this really expensive equipment is, is it, it's just not there. You don't really need it because these other, the software and stuff is really, uh, does a lot of that heavy lifting for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's get back to you and your podcast. I'd really like to know what is your favorite podcast? Um, and I have had a couple of people tell me they don't like answering that question. So let me put it this way. If somebody doesn't know who you are and they're just getting started and getting to know you and they would like to listen to a couple of your podcast episodes to get to know you a little and understand the kind of stuff that you do, what one or two podcasts would you direct them to first? 
you know, I told you that I do everything kind of by, by theme. Yeah. And I think if you go back to my January episodes, they're all about courage. And I feel like those episodes are really relevant to anybody who is just needing a little bit of a, of a push to do something that's hard. So the whole month of January, I loved all of those. I usually try to include three in a month. I'll try to include three educational podcasts where I teach you how to do something or why you should do something or break something down for people like a concept down. And then I try to do a, um, a success story from one of my clients like, hey, this person did it and you can do it too. And in January, I really talked a lot about needing courage to do anything. And that courage does not mean being unafraid. That courage does not mean like I'm a I'm I figured it all out and now I can do it. Courage means being afraid and doing it anyway. And the uh, I had a couple of ahas and in that month I tell some stories about the ahas that I had around that. And I think that's a good place for people to start because in January, that's when I kind of uh, started to shift my, I'm pivoting my business a little bit. I'm talking a lot more about content creation, visibility, and it takes courage to do those things. So. If you want to know more about like how I got to where I am and who I help and how I help them, I think I think the January podcasts are a good place to start when we're talking about courage. That's great. We will make sure uh, we're going to be putting this on our website. And so we will make sure and link to the January episodes. I agree. Those were all really good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that is a good place for people to start. Now, really quickly before we sign off. Sure. Just give people a, a short synopsis, a little bit, um, the kind of work that you do mm-hmm. and how people can connect with you and the best way for them to find you. I am a business development coach. And so I really like helping women grow their businesses. And one of the things I know they need to grow is to be seen. And so I help people master their message in a way that lands with their audience. So at this time, especially, it's really important that we connect with our clients, connect with our audience and cut through the noise. And so I basically pull out of people's heads the messaging that they need so that their audience can actually hear them. And I do that in a couple of different ways, you know, one-on-ones where I pull everything out of your head that you need. I have some group options. But honestly, following me on social media, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Jen Liddy Coach. I'm a one end Jen, so it's just J-E-N-L-I-D-D-Y Coach. Um, and if you just follow me there, you'll find a lot of really useful, helpful, value-based, value-based content. Um, but my website is jenliddy.com. And so those are the basic two places where people, or three places, Instagram, Facebook, and my website where people can find me. Okay, great. Yeah, I hope people that are listening, if you have not uh, connected with Jen before, I would encourage you to. A lot of the stuff that she shares, it's really great. It's fun. It's almost always relevant. Some days, you know, <laughs> it uh, makes me laugh <laughs> um, because she's very just sort of out open about what's going on in the world and what's going on in her life. So, um, yeah, I think most I think people really enjoy it. I really try to. My approach to content creation is there's something that your audience is thinking and it's your job to say it for them so that they can hear you. And so I really try to, in my content, say stuff that I know I'm not the only one who's thinking this and how can I help you kind of get through this nonsense? Oh gosh, that's perfect. And you, you're, you're good at it. It's great. Um, I can't remember, I remember I read many of them and go, oh, this is exactly right. This is, this is it. So, thanks again for taking time out of your busy you schedule. Yeah. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate you guys so much helping me do my podcast every week. You're such a, you're gems, both of you. Thank you. Uh, Well, you are a joy to work with. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) Bye, you guys. Bye. That's our wrap for this episode. We hope you found today's sound advice helpful. Let us know what you think by leaving us a review. You can get more resources at podcastsoundadvice.com. Until next time.